Alright, so we're gonna do something a little bit different this year. It's 2023, and I know for as long as I've been on YouTube, the relationship you and I have is you ask me a question, then I come on here and I give you a wonky answer, and it's, oh my god, the time teller, he's so funny! Whoa. Times have changed. That's right. Tables have turned. A turntable. A turntable. A turntable. A turntable. But it's time for me to ask you a question. And not just you, but you. And you. And you. And everyone else that follows me, apparently. Why the f are you sending me this watch? Why me? Why me? It is 4.09 p.m. Let's get down to business. That's right, guys, the Parallel Turbine Hentai Erotic Limited Edition watch. I don't even know how much I'm going to be able to show you, so this episode might be like zero minutes long, or uh, might not exist at all, because, again, YouTube and hentai, I don't... <laughs> Can I even say that word on, on YouTube? <laughs> Now, my mom watches my channel, so I'm gonna go ahead and say, Mom, uh, you're not allowed to watch this episode, all right? So, you can't watch this. Now, for my longtime viewers, you'll know I've done an episode talking about erotic orology, all right? It's this weird subgenre uh, when it comes to, I guess, highly complicated watches, uh, because instead of there being like tourbillons moving or like a power reserve moving, it's usually uh, someone's jiggly bits. What can I say on YouTube? I don't... Uh, it's usually someone's pee uh, pee or... Bing bongs. <laughs> now, I've made it very clear, my stance on erotic orology. I think it's stupid because you guys can be as, you know, sexual as you want. It's, it's what you guys do in your bedroom. It's, it's, I don't care. None of my business, right? But imagine being so, so into it that you need to have it on your watch. And the interesting thing is that when we're talking about erotic orology, it's almost never uh, like inexpensive watches. It's usually, again, very complicated watches with a lot of moving parts from watchmakers that don't make very many watches. In fact, I think some of the more big box brands would be like Blancpain and uh, Ulysses Nardin. They, they have erotic watches. I know uh, Richard Meal kind of does. Uh, although they, they very recently made a, an emoji watch that looked like it had a bunch of dildos on it, but that's, you know, <laughs> whatever. But this has got to be, the, the, the watch we're talking about today, or the group of watches, has got to be one of the first specific hentai watches. And again, I gotta ask, why, why, did, why did everybody send it to me? Like, there's so many watch journalists out there, there's so many watch YouTubers out there, why did everyone spam specifically me? What is it about me that made you guys immediately associate this watch with, with me? I, I... Now, I do have to give this watchmaker some credit, I suppose, because it's, it's not as in your face as some other uh, erotic watches are, where it's just like straight up grotesque, like craziness. This has some mystique behind it like they're hiding part of it uh so it's it's i guess what i'm looking at here the images are placed on the dial only really visible when the turbine ac activated by wrist movement is spinning quickly okay so there's a turbine uh on the dial that i guess is not uh, actuated by the movement i guess it's also it must be like somewhat of a counterweight where you move it and if it spins fast enough you can get like a a bigger view of the erotic image uh, behind that spinning turbine. I don't think that I can really show the images, but a blog to watch does have a link to what, what all the images look like, and I think I can leave that link. I don't know if I can even leave that link, because this is like, it's like hentai. It's like actually hentai. 
So, Gato, can you please, like, severely edit these? Um, we're going to try to scroll through some. Uh, there's one with... Uh, you know what? I'm not even going to describe these, actually, because this is going to get... There's boobs. Uh, there's butts. Um, and there's, legit, like, a legit couple, like, actually doing it. So, it's crazy. I guess they have a few different... Uh, reference numbers that one two three four five six seven eight reference numbers with four dial variants so i guess uh, each dial variant has either a titanium case or a case uh, with dlc coated steel so i've never heard of uh Parallel before um, but these are 44 millimeter watches with a p181 movement uh, matched with a rubber strap and each will be limited to 88 pieces. I don't have a price for this yet. If we can get a price before this episode gets finished editing, I suppose, we, we will put it on screen. But as of right now, I don't have a price. This is, I guess, I don't want to say like revolutionary. And, and it's definitely not innovative. But but I guess it's funny to see how mainstream hentai has become. That's, that, that's what I'm saying. Like... The appeal of anime has gone up and down, right? Because I remember in the 90s watching anime before I really knew what that word was. I remember at Suncoast, I would they had a... Man, this, this is going to age me. They had a cassette area that was literally titled Japanimation. So this was before it was even called anime where I was from. It was literally called Japanimation. And so I remember seeing like those cassettes and, and I remember what like asking my parents to buy me some and I didn't even know what these titles meant the first one I watched was Ninja Scroll I was way too young to watch Ninja Scroll the first scene is like something you would find on one of these watches it's it's yeah still a great great anime film though um and then I got into Akira still way too young to understand that I'm 33, still don't really understand it, but it's one of my favorite animes ever. And what I'm trying to get at is, although anime has gone up and down when it comes to, uh, you know, mainstream appeal, seems like right now anime is, like, the most popular it's ever, ever been. And with that comes the more, you know, naughty side of it. And it's funny to see that now when we're talking about uh, erotic orology, uh, it's not just images or depictions of people in these situations it's now specifically hentai so that i mean that speaks to the appeal of i guess this anime weeb culture so uh guys in the comment section let me know what's your favorite hentai no, I'm, just <laughs> I'm getting what's your favorite anime and would you ever be caught wearing one of these watches let me know in the comment section by the way guys uh i didn't do the whole guess the watch thing but i am wearing my neo tokyo because i thought although i don't have really an anime watch and i don't really have uh, uh, erotic watch. Uh, this Neo Tokyo kind of inspired by the uh, Akira cityscape from Casio. Thought it was fitting for today. So, and it turns me on. So. <laughs> All right, guys, I love you. Stay happy, stay healthy, stay blessed. I'm Jordan Goodman, uh, the time teller. Always remember, I didn't invent time. I just tell it. Also, guys, please check out this episode from my dad's channel. Previous to that, we had something called Dementia Pugilistica, the punch drunk fighter who got progressive dementia, Parkinsonism, and other symptoms from being hit in the head so many times. That's right, if you enjoyed that, my dad does have a YouTube channel, The Beverly Hills Shrink, where he talks about a bunch of very interesting things when it comes to uh, psychiatry, when it comes to medication, when it comes to true crime. Uh, all of these takes are from the mind of a neuropsychiatrist and psychopharmacologist, so please subscribe to that channel. I'll leave a link to it in the description below, and I will catch you on the next one. Love you guys. Yeah, yeah, yeah.